all thank the organizers for inviting me for this, uh, uh, this to this prestigious institution. And I'm happy to see young students here. It's like uh, another community medicine class for me. And where most of my students are always with the um, phone, and I also see the same situation here. Good. I think the, the phones are keeping you very, very busy. <laughs> okay. Um, I think this topic, though, uh, writing a paper, research paper for publication. Do you think it's important? From this side. Yes? Yes? How many of you are interested in research? Yes? Raise your hands. Please, this side. Okay, I can see a few hands. But if I show this, I think most of you should raise your hands. Yes? Yes or no? There is no choice if you are going to work in a medical college. Okay? That is the situation now. So, for a post of professor, we need uh, at least four research papers in, what is that? What is that name? Something is written there. Indexed or national journals. Okay. And for the post of, uh, uh, from assistant to associate professor, you need... Um, two research papers in index journals. That's what the MCI uh, guidelines 2009 says. And I think there is some revision going on where they are increasing the number of papers. And it should be first or second author presentations, okay, publications, okay? So uh, I think many of us are going to be in medical colleges as clinicians or in the, uh, the non-clinical side. Whatever it is, there is no choice, right? So we have to go about with research. So let's see how uh, we can do this effectively, how we can uh, go about publishing in a good uh, journal. Okay, we'll have the presentation in two parts. First is, okay, once you have finished the paper, you want to publish it, okay? So how, how do you go from this, for this, once you have the paper in hand? The second part of my presentation will be about when you write a paper for publication, what you should keep in mind. Okay, so the, we'll see this in two parts. So the objectives of this session will be uh, to um, give you some knowledge about the terminologies like what is a peer review journal, what is an index journal and what is impact factor and uh, what are the key is issues we should focus upon when we are going to write a paper and then uh, what are the some of the reasons for uh, uh, acceptance and rejection of research papers. Okay. So uh, we have a paper uh, and we want to publish it. So what are the things we have to keep in mind? So. What are we going to publish first? Okay, whether it's going to be an abstract or it's going to be a full paper. Uh, I think more, many of the terms for second years will not make sense now. But at least uh, you should be happy that you're, going, you're getting you're, um, used to these terms at a very early stage. Uh, I think, are you applying for MC, uh, ICMR projects? Yes? Then I think you should publish it. Because I'm happy to tell that my first publication was a student ICMR project, okay. So one of my, my first ICMR student projects was my first publication for the student and as well as for me. So it is, man, it's important that you publish your papers. So get used to this so that you can publish in a good journal and that will be, you will have publications even as undergrad students, okay. So uh, whether it's going to be an abstract or a full paper, and who, how, where are you going to publish it? What is the journal? What type of journal? Okay, uh, for students, we have a lot of student journals. And what subject you're going to? It also depends on what subject you're going to, uh, your paper is on. Okay, whether it is non-clinical side, microbiology or pathology, or it's in the medicine side, whatever it is. Okay, and then who is the audience we are targeting at? Who, who are we targeting at? So just look into those things. And the last thing is, uh, what is the publication guidelines? What does the journal say regarding the guidelines? Uh, how much the abstract, what is, should be the abstract uh, word number? So, and what are the guidelines for publication? And also the style, article style of writing also is important. Okay, so uh, moving on, I told you we are going to be getting used to three uh, terminologies, right? Uh, uh, I think uh, these things are most commonly talked upon. Um, what is a peer-reviewed journal? Who is a peer? Who is your peer? Yeah, peer. Okay, so what, the name itself uh, says, what is a peer-reviewed journal then? Yes? So, um, so any article, see, uh, is, which is, uh, is published in a peer-reviewed journal only if it is, after it is subjected to a lot of reviews uh, by experts in that particular subject, whichever subject we are sending the article on. So, uh, peer-reviewed journals follow these procedures. 
uh, what does it reflect? What does it reflect? Yes, when we submit an article. So the journals which follow this style, that is, whenever they accept, uh, get an article for publication, they send it for uh, review by experts in that particular field. So that's called a uh, peer-reviewed article. And the journals follow this style, most of the journals, because they want, uh, uh, it reflects the so, I mean, scholarship, I mean, um, that this article or this journal is scholarly and the journals which have come to, or the articles which have come to this journal have undergone rigorous uh, review before it has been accepted. So, uh, people will want you to uh, send articles in peer-reviewed journals. Okay, so that's one thing. Okay. The other thing is, uh, I think MCA guidelines we saw, right? What is, uh, you have to publish your paper in indexed journals. What is this? What is this? Have you come across words like PubMed? What's that? Yes, they're all databases where uh, many of the journals are members. Okay, so to get into the membership of these uh, databases also, they have to go through rigorous processes. Okay, so why, why there, these databases are there? Yes? To give wide coverage, see when, when, the, uh, when the journals are indexed in these databases, it is easy for people to, for viewers to see. It has a wide coverage when these um, journals are members of these databases. So those journals are called as indexed journals. It could be in PubMed, it could be many, any of the uh, index medicals, Embase. So there are a lot of um, databases where we can, uh, where the journals are members because these databases are available for the journals to have a wider coverage. Okay, that's why uh, MCI says indexed journals. Okay, so when you are looking for publication, though this is not actually, uh, uh, this is not a true reflection of the quality, but then we have to go by the guidelines sometimes. So uh, there are a lot of critics for these things, but for us, for now, we should know that, okay, it's better to look for indexed journals. Okay. Uh, for now, it is considered to be the reflection of quality of that uh, journal. Okay, so we have uh, uh, seen two terms. What is a peer-reviewed journal? The other one is an index journal. And that, uh, the last important terminology, impact factor. This is also considered to be the, uh, uh, be a quality, uh, reflects the quality of a journal. When I say uh, the impact factor for BMJ is 16, uh, every year varies. Okay, in 2003, 13 it was. 16.3. What was that? What does it mean? What is the impact factor? Yes? Yes? So, there, uh, see, suppose uh, BMJ is there, a British Medical Journal is there. How many times the articles from that journal has been referred or cited by somebody else? Okay, that's the impact. So, how many times articles from that particular journal has been cited divided by the total number of publications in the particular year or so. Okay. So that is, this is also considered to be one of the reflections of quality. Suppose uh, we, we, we take more articles, so you are all writing papers, right? You write for ICMR. So you take review of literature, right? You do review of literature or not? Yes. So what do you do? Where do you take articles from? Yes? Yeah, you go through, go to PubMed, look for articles. Yes? So what, what, what do you do? You cite that? article. That might be from some journal, right? The, the more the number of times you uh, cite a particular journal, the impact factor increases. But this is also in criticism, which, is, which we did not know now. But then, this is also considered to be an um, index for the, I mean, um, for the quality of the article. Like for example, uh, PSG, we have an internal, um, we, we, we write for a grant, internal grant. PSG gives grant for faculty and students. So when we sent the, uh, our, uh, we, we, we wrote our protocols or proposals, uh, they also asked for our research, uh, previous research, uh, what we have done. So they've asked, okay, how many publications have you done? How many in index journals? And what is the impact factor of each journal? Okay, so they value, uh, they score us based on whether we have uh, sent, uh, published in journals which have a higher impact factor. Okay, so this impact factor is also a reflection of the quality of the journal. So when you look for publications, want to send for publications, see to that your journals have a good impact factor and indexed journals. Though there are criticisms, leave alone that for now, just look into 
these two things okay okay and then what happens okay we we have, we have decided the uh, article uh, journal where we are going to send the article and what happens now yes you submit your manuscript whatever you prepared so initially the editor and the sub uh, the associate editor and people in the initial state itself sometimes they 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 scrutinize and more, many of them get rejected in the initial phase itself okay and once that initial phase is passed through uh, suppose you pass that initial stage then it goes for peer they send it to various experts in that particular field which is called as peer review okay and then uh some uh, without any comment sometimes it might after peer review it might be rejected and sometimes it may they'll ask you to do some revisions okay and then uh, even after revision sometimes it might be rejected and most of the time it gets published okay so it it might take few months to year, even 12 to 18 months it might take for one article before it is accepted or rejected okay so that is the process which we uh, which happens when you send your manuscript for publication so uh, this is when you have decided on an uh, finish an article and then when you go when you are going thinking of uh, submitting so these are the things we have to keep in mind which i told you is the first part of my presentation so uh, look in uh, looking into what is peer review journal what is index journal what is the impact factor and what happens in the publication process and now um, what you should keep in mind see uh, the uh, authorship who all can be authors suppose you are writing a paper yes you are doing a uh, uh, for example i'll give you an example you are doing a study and uh, in microbiology a lab technician helped you during for the culture process okay uh, that is one part of your study just the culture okay you you feel so obligated to her okay she help me can she be the author for the can she be one of the co-authors why then what will you do for her yeah it, yeah okay so now many of the journals uh, you, you you have to see in this uh, international committee of medical journal editors you just google search ic mje okay they have given guidelines as to who can be the author there are of criteria is given and whether people are involved in all these stages okay they have given many stages which we are not going to discuss in detail uh, already many of them are sleeping so i don't want the entire class uh, class to sleep okay so uh, uh, you can go go look into this and see who can be authors and who can be the others can be included in the acknowledgement that's very very important yes ethical clearance okay you are doing a study um or uh, just uh, taking the case records okay you, you, i think you have an mrd good mrd session uh, section here so you are taking uh, going through the records of all your patients and seeing how many of them how many of them were hypertensives or in the previous 3 months who have attended the medical opd just going through the records does this need ethical clearance only the records i am not going to see the patient i'm just going to go collect the records of the patients and see if uh, the pay, uh, whether they have the particular problem or not ethical clearance required yes yes why i'm happy you told yes yes yeah okay so any study which involves human subjects or animals i'm when i say human subjects their records their blood their urine whatever okay their tissue anything which is related to that even it can be only even giving a questionnaire it could be just giving a question i want to see the uh, just get a feedback of in this uh, for this workshop and i want to publish it i'm just giving a question now what is there okay any study which involves human subjects or animal subjects or their related things like their tissue their pa patient records or just an awareness study whatever it is requires ethical clearance from the institutional human or animal ethics committee okay clear okay because all journal uh, none of the journals will accept your study without ethical clearance they all ask a copy of the scanned copy of your ethical clearance form when you submit your studies for publication so please be aware 
they will not, they'll not accept your study even ICMR. ICMR studies when you submit your proposals you also have to submit your ethical clearance form. Okay. So please be aware all studies which the ethics committee will decide whether you need a, uh, you need to present it or you, it is, you, need not, you need not go undergo a review. Okay. They will decide but you have to get the clearance from the ethics committee be it animal or human ethics committee. Okay. Very important. And then when you submit your manuscript, you also don't forget to submit your copyright form. You, you give the right for them to what? Publish your, you transfer your right of that particular article for the editor to publish it. Okay. So this is very, very important. Many of them forget to do this. So copyright form is also important. Okay. So, so far, if you have no doubts, let's take a break and break meaning is a small interaction okay so uh, students i don't know if you have uh, sent your uh, have so far sent anything for publication first second year i think no okay i i mean it's, uh, the other faculty uh, if you have sent journals for pub, i mean articles for publications and you had some uh, issues what i just want to know what are the issues you had you just have Interaction. Yes. Were they rejected or sir, uh, any correction? I mean, you were asked to do any corrections? Yes. Uh, yeah. Madam, uh, yeah. Madam, the doubt is, is case report uh, uh, included under the publication? Can we take case reports? They, uh, for now, there is no problem with that act. But then, and another question, how many authors are valid? They actually, are two authors, some are telling only first author is valid. So uh, if you go through the, I, I recently went through, through the uh, MCI uh, website, uh, guidelines 2009 says first author publications in two journals for associate professor and first author uh, and four journals to become professor. That's what it says. Okay, but then it depends on the institution. Sometimes institutional policy is varying. Yeah, you can just ask. Some are telling uh, two authors are also valid. Second author is also valid. Uh, uh, just go through the MCA. But then uh, inst uh, also can have a different, I mean, inst MCA website says this. No, if you had any problems when you sent for publication, we can, ju we can just see what were the problems when you sent your article. You would have got some comments, right? If you, you can share some of them. Article not in line with the uh, journal's uh, topic. Journals. Uh, it's not in the, the journal's, uh, like what to say, the, um, their subject. Uh, is, yeah, it out was. Of, out of context. Out of context. Okay. Statistical mistakes. Yes. Statistical errors. They corrected it. Actually. Uh, uh, can you specify it or? Uh, they had used a different method of. Uh, statistical analysis. analysis. Okay. They the other method. And then they accepted. Okay. It was uh, sent for correction or rejected? It was sent. They, correct, they accepted it after correction. After you corrected. Okay. Excellent. Any anybody else can share? Any of you who has sent for uh, publication? Or what do you think would be the problems? Like uh, he shared this experience, what you foresee as problems, you can also see. This should not. I, I have an experience that I have simulated of the data. I am not working with the original data. Just I have simulated, I created artificial data on a competing risk factor. And I thought that I created a paper with the different distributions. I thought that it is an educative manner, so I sent to uh, Journal of Statistical Education. And they told, uh, by, uh, by they rejected and told that you have to send to Journal of Simulation Techniques, Statistical Simulation Techniques. When I sent to Journal of Simulation Techniques, they told this is a uh, method of teaching, so you have to send to a Journal of Statistical Education. So my paper lies in my hand. That's what, uh, see, they themselves are not, so this is the problem. See, when, uh, actually it's the teamwork. Okay, it, the responsibility is on the editor, okay, the reviewer, 
and the author. All three are responsible. Okay, that's the problem. So they are not clear what is there. What is the scope of their journal? That is the here the problem is not with us. The problem is they don't know what is the uh, scope of their journal. That is the problem here, actually. <laughs> okay, because I, I I forgot to mention it is the uh, in, I mean here it is a teamwork of all three of them actually. Language. 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 Problem. Yeah. Uh, grammatical errors. You mean? Grammatical errors. Definitely. Actually, not able to understand. Uh, we will be meaning something, and they are understanding in a different way because Excellent. the country is totally different. Excellent. Okay. And money. If you are going for good tech journal, money is too much. Finance. Okay. They they want uh, you to pay money, right? Yeah. That is there. That is the problem now. I mean, session, but then that is all you. Okay, I also have an experience, like uh, first uh, just, uh, statistical problem. What happened was I said, okay, uh, there was, a st I mean, uh, the, the, the one of the objectives was physical activity and uh, obesity or something. So we said uh, children who were physically active, they were less obese. And uh, there was a statistic, uh, there was a significant difference, I said. Whereas, actually there was, uh, as sir said, the p-value was more than 0 0.05. And actually it was not statistically significant. But we, we used the word, there was a significant difference though there was actually there was a difference between the non obese and obese category in the physical activity but then it was not statistically significant i had loosely used the term significant okay i just loosely used them there was a significant difference but then they, they pointed out that mistake and said see there is no statistical significance p value is more than 0 0.05 how can you say that it is significant so you should not you cannot uh, as he said you cannot use the uh, words very loose uh, we mean in of research in research i'll show you actually we are going to discuss those issues also in one of the slides will when we do a so moving on to the next uh, okay um, a few of them pointed out some and i think i'll add on to this what are the reasons for rejection of studies okay uh, inappropriate or incomplete statistics as he already told excellent actually that's a common thing and I think statisticians have a very good role and we also have to have some basic knowledge on statistics and if we don't have like madam said please go to the statistician when you're in trouble okay so get it corrected from them uh, we, we cannot ask I did a mistake we cannot use loosely use the terms and we cannot go with inappropriate suppose we need uh, we need to do a t-test and we do something else okay uh, we should not use inappropriate statistical tests okay over interpretation like how I did significant okay I cannot use the word significant over interpretation of results inappropriate or suboptimal instruments okay uh, especially when we are using a questioners no what happens uh, a questioner is also an instrument to find out some problem okay instrument doesn't mean just instrument uh, a weighing scale or a stadiometer okay like for example if I want to study a depression among first year MBBS students okay uh, there are a lot of scales available if I devise my own scale sometimes what happens I will st my scale will be uh, studying on anxiety okay my st actually it will be studying about anxiety rather than depression okay so I should be very careful when we are choosing our instruments for study okay and sample too small or biased sample size is very very important actually it is itself is a, a long session sample size and then uh, text difficult to follow language language is a major problem okay especially when we are not actually uh, we are uh, we are not uh, our first language is not english so definitely we'll have a problem when we are writing because all of the journals we are writing in uh, for in english right okay and uh, insufficient, insufficient problem statement because we are not doing a proper review of literature inaccurate or inconsistent data reported Okay, uh, I, uh, outdated review of literature that's why guidelines say restrict your review of literature to the previous 5 or 10 years don't go beyond that that's what guidelines say 
insufficient data or defective tables and figures. Okay. So these are some of the reasons why and I think most of them have been pointed which I have not told out of context. They say the journal says it is not within my purview or this, this subject is not the focus of a journal. This is not the appropriate journal which you have to send. And then financial issues, I think we should not discuss the juniors now. There are financial issues uh, where some journals uh, uh, require it, but then we will not discuss that now. Okay. So, uh, okay, we will see the positive thing, right? Why, how can journals, how can we make journals accept our article? Okay, important is extensive proper review of literature and problem statement. Okay, and then uh, obviously the whatever the opposite of what we have seen, if you do, do a good um, review of literature, good sampling, proper language, I think there is no reason the articles should not be uh, accepted for the particular uh, journal. So moving on to the second part of our presentation, I told you how are the what are the guidelines? Okay, before we write, uh, submit the paper, what are the, how to we have done the study? How can you write it properly so that it can get accepted, right? So this is the format most of the journals I think will have. Okay, you need to give an abstract. Sir, I think has told you an order which is easy to write, but then you can follow any order to write. But ultimately, when you have finished it, this is the order you have to follow to submit it. Okay. Abstract, title, introduction, materials and methods, results, discussion and conclusion, acknowledgements, uh, reference and uh, figures and tables have to give, be given separately. Okay. So looking into each of them, uh, generally abstracts uh, restrict to uh, 200, uh, 200 uh, average I think they all say 250 words. Many of the journals say uh, restrict to abstract to 250 words and these are the things which should be there okay okay very uh, the problem what you want to study what is the objective of your study methods very briefly res results and conclusion these are the things which your abstract should have that's all okay you should restrict to these things title this is the most important okay uh, uh, suppose uh, what is the uh, like face is the index of the mind right Okay. So uh, the title will say whether this article, what will be inside this article. Okay. How about this? What is your comment on this? Comparative evaluation of propofol ketamine and propofol fentanyl in minor surgery. So you are comparing two combinations, propofol ketamine and propofol fentanyl in minor surgery. Okay. Okay or not okay? Yes. Yes? Okay or not okay? Not okay. Why? So you should correctly represent the content and breadth of the study reported. Okay. So your, your title should rep represent the content and the breadth of the study. Okay. What? The content and the breadth. Does this fulfill that? Yes or no? Right? Okay. How can it be made? How about this? Comparative evaluation of efficiency of propofol ketamine and propofol fentanyl combinations as sole anesthetic agents in patients undergoing minor ambulatory gynecological operations. Is that okay? Yes or no? It shows uh, the efficiency. What you are comparing? The safety or efficiency? Here you are comparing the efficiency, right? And then as anesthetic agents on whom? on patients undergoing minor ambulatory gynecological procedures. Okay. So this, this is uh, so the title. Please be careful with your title. Next, introduction. So first, how do you do, or how do you go about the introduction? Generally, it's like this. Okay, be broad. Just uh, give a broad information uh, on the topic. Okay. Uh, go from uh, broad, then narrow down your topic. Narrow background information. What is the need for the study? That will tell you the need for the study and then focus on your paper. What is the problem you are going to study? And then summary of your problem. So they say generally restrict to 300 to 500 words. 
four or five pertinent publications related to problem should be presented and critiqued. Okay, at least four or five publications. Next, uh, so done with abstract, the title, then introduction is done, coming on to the methods and materials. Okay, okay, it's just that, um, how do you do the experiment? Yes? Yeah. She's the right person to, she's a biochemistry faculty, yes. Huh. Aim, when we have observation column, uh, experiment with the procedure, ex uh, observation and inference and in the end we have result, we put the result. Uh, every time you uh, keep taking the student, uh, students each step or just you show once and then they are able to replicate what you say. Yeah, that's what, see uh, materials and methods actually you, uh, like how you write, your, what you do you write from first to last, right? You write the procedure you do. So that when you read again, you need not, uh, the faculty, uh, you or somebody else, your friend reading your, uh, reading this paper, can replicate this work, can replicate this in their setup or whatever it is. So that should be the details of your materials and methods, including setting, location, where was it done, institutional or community based study. If it's institutional, outpatient or ICU patients, where was it done, okay. Uh, participants, who were your subjects, okay, whether it was the case records or it was the blood samples or it was the patient per se, okay, who were your subjects, what was the study design, you went through a number of designs from the morning, right, whether it was cross-sectional or longitudinal, whether it was observational or interventional or, if, uh, uh, or a randomized control trial, okay. The, if it was an interventional study, what was the intervention you did? Explain in detail, step by step, what interventions you did and what was the uh, outcome you expect in your study, what is the statistical methods you used, whether I used a chi-square test, I used an ANOVA, I used a t-test, whatever it is, what did you use for your analysis and what were the ethical issues you addressed, whether you got ethical clearance from your institution, whether you got consent from your subjects, if it's going to be a minor, assent from the uh, minor if above seven years and consent from the parents, whatever it is, how did you address the ethical issues, okay. And don't forget, see methods, whatever you are saying, it's not your own, you are going to refer, suppose you are going to take height of an individual, what standards you are following? Generally, we follow the World Health Organization guidelines, WHO guidelines. So, use, don't forget to give references to all the methods used in the study, including the statistical methods. Please, don't forget to write the reference for methodology also. And moving on to results. Okay, now we are done with the work and results. I think, uh, I will tell you what was the, what's the main problem. Objective presentation of your results, that's all. It's a summary of what was done and it is not a discussion. Sometimes what happens is we are over uh, zealous and we want to say like some whatever we feel like oh, this could be because of that. No, this is not discussion, it's just the result. Whatever you are done, you are putting into paper. That is all is the result. So don't be over zealous and give your interpretation in your results. Whatever we have not, don't assume and write in your results. That could be done in your discussion, okay. So interpret the results, did the study confirm or deny your hypothesis? I think um, Dr. Gautam was telling about hypothesis, right? What do you think? Okay, whether the bottle is, I, I, this bottle has hot water, whether you proved it or not proved it. If not, did the results provide an alternate hypothesis? Did, did the results agree with other research than elsewhere? whether yours is similar to it or different and if, uh, if it's different, why do you think so? Why do you think it is different? And implications of study for, uh, for the, what is the implication in the practical, in clinical, your uh, practical, how are you going to apply it in practice and relate to previous research. So discussions should be an interpretation of your results, discuss with the previous results, say why it is similar to or different from the other results. 
this is the problem commonly encountered uh, when you don't present your results properly that is also a reason for rejection okay so please uh, uh, label your uh, results properly when you put figures no label them properly then it's simple clearly formatted sometimes uh, you you want to show show your enthusiasm you put your results both in table as well as in figure you want to show a bar diagram a pie diagram everything see each one is a different way of expressing your results so certain things you might you want to highlight you can just show as a pie diagram you need not show everything for one result okay and mm, there is a wrong belief that there should be one pie diagram one bar diagram to make it colorful there is nothing like that research is not about being colors it's just the uh, whatever you have done you want to show it in a the most simplest form it could be tables it could be bar diagram or it could be a pie diagram or whatever it is okay and then detailed captions this is very very important detailed captions and numbering okay each table should have one caption and a number table 1 and or a figure 1 and the caption is very 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 important so remember to pay attention to the style of writing prepare to deal with issues with english if you have problems please get help from somebody to read another person to read and correct your mistakes it's always you can get that right and then review the submission guidelines because many of the journals are now following this i told you right international committee for medical journal editors okay they follow this guideline so many of the journals which are members of this have uniform guidelines for submission okay you can follow that see what is their guideline and uh, try to if you want to impress try to include references from journal to which you are submitting so it will add it will be an imp uh, they'll be impressed if you want to uh, create an impression yes and review and edit uh, rejected manuscripts before resubmitting and uh, sometimes some journals ask for possible reviewers okay if you have if you have in your own field you know possible reviewers you can send the name of those reviewers okay and uh, before submission you can get it uh, reviewed by two to three experts um, issues of plagiarism there is lot of plagiarism uh, there's a softwares now available to check if you are copied i mean unknowingly uh, things you are writing your uh, introduction review mission review methodology and you know, all if you unknowingly copied things whether if uh, it will help you check so uh, and also disclose any conflict of interest if you have in this article say if there is no conflict of interest say there is nil there is no conflict of interest okay uh, this is what i told i think he told the main problem was language okay be as simple as possible we are not writing a uh, um, poem i mean non detailed this is not a non detailed class where you have english style and all those things this is just research and you want it to present it as simple as possible okay so see one side is the jargon and other side is the preferred use of terms okay like for example a considerable amount of can be just much okay like that you can you can, you can try to minimize uh, or try, try not to overuse so the language because it will give a different term and meaning in research okay in the or as i told you right significant that's really uh, i i or then next time onwards when I, i was writing paper i used to be very careful in the results okay i never made that mistake once made then that is a lesson for life right so be careful when you write uh, um, your uh, paper be simple as possible okay this is very very important you can go if you don't have uh, proper words you can just go through the web see which is the most simple language for a particular pro thing you can uh, choose that and write so your you have a checklist it should not have anecdotes or stories okay report facts not outlandish conclusions whatever you got in the results that should be the conclusion you cannot uh, assume and write no misspellings very very important no spelling mistakes no gram uh, grammatical errors okay and meet the formatting guidelines as i told that ic mje that guidelines i think many of the journals follow that you can uh, follow those journals thank you so two thank you madam two questions are allowed if anybody has got questions please raise your hand okay no questions thank you uh, what's the procedure to make a scale
scale you uh, specified about scale no scale what oh okay for question now okay um, i think i gave the example of depression scale okay actually um, uh, it depends like what type of study you are using some studies like for example if you want to do a study on uh, uh, some anxiety scale or pain scale there are lot of scales which are, you go through, just go through the web see if there, there is an already um, validated scale i am using a term called validation okay so a validated tool which is already available for this particular problem you are studying in case or part of your problem you, you might have many objectives and one of them if it's available and if you need to modify it to indian standards or your settings fine if it's available fine and if you want to modify it you can modify like for example physical activity question of for children which is already available but we need to modify the certain questions to indian standards right if it is not available if you are going to prepare one you have to validate it if i mean validation uh, you uh, uh, there are many methods like peer review you, you do a scale you do uh, you give it to your peers or the experts in your field ask them to correct it one or uh, and the next step you can do a pilot testing you uh, test this to uh, tool in a small number of subjects so uh, see how it works what are the mistakes you correct it again get an expert review so these are the ways you can validate your tool so see first whether there is one available if not prepare one and validate it and who who gives the approval for this no you can see the, you can do validation by uh, peer review as well as by pilot testing Ma'am, uh, you just uh, told about impact factor, ma'am. Yeah. You should look better the impact factor, better the journal is. Mm. So there's something called ICV index cop. I don't know exact. ICV some journals mention in, the, in instead of impact factor, they're giving this in ICV. What, uh, index what is index copper? Ex Sorry. Index copper. I'm not sure the full form. I copper. That is an index. That is uh, one of is the it, databases it, for indexation. Is it same as impact? In fact, factor? no, no, no. Impact. Each journal. Many of the journals see. Uh, there is one uh, source which does the index, I mean, impact factor, studies the impact factor. Okay, so the impact factor, not all journals will have, have an impact factor done for their journals. Okay, and not all journals will be indexed. These two are different terms. Okay, this, uh, what you are saying is, it's a database for uh, where the journals are members. Is it good enough? Um, they are also good enough, ma'am, we can publish See, they way. say, um, MCA, thank God, has not told what index journal. Only in public, has it specified? No, it is not so far specified which indexation, whether it's only PubMed or Copernicus, no, not so far. Okay. List. The person I have thought that this impact factor issue, now most of the journals are going to become electronic. Indian Journal of Medical Research itself, they make electronic version. So in the long future, how this terminology will exist, I have a doubt. At present, we are using that terminology. I am worried about the future because most of the journals, they are going to make electronic versions. So hard copies may not be available to any of the journals. Actually, the, I told you, there is, say, this is not the scope of this uh, uh, session because of, very, because of the heterogeneous group of audience to discuss impact factor because, so, but the sense, this issue was, came up, impact factor is not the, I told you, the best quality ind indicator of a journal. It actually was found out by somebody to see how many times your journal was critiqued by some person in past, things like that. But then it now, it has become a proxy for uh, 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 quality of a journal. So this is not the sole leader, but then we have to go by certain norms, right? People looking for that. So that's why we are saying, talking about that. Thank you all and thank you for the opportunity.